Monoclonal antibodies have really entered the upfront management of patients with multiple myeloma. And particularly on those younger patients, uh, you usually combine with an immunomodulatory agent and a protosome inhibitor and steroids and what we call quadruplet therapy, followed by autologous transplant. Uh, in the U.S., it's mostly done in the form of DARA-RVD, but there are other combinations, for example, DARA-KRD and so forth. Of course, those uh, regimens have uh, fantastic rates of response, and responses are also very durable. However, patients still do relapse, and there is very little information about how uh, other therapies perform once patients uh, do relapse. We've got to keep in mind that just about all regimens that we have for the treatment of patients with relapsed myeloma were developed in a population whose disease was not resistant, was not refracted to daratumumab. We also have had this long-held belief in myeloma that if you use a monoclonal antibody up front and then for a fixed duration of time, that can be used later with, with clinical benefit, although that has not yet been proved. So what we did in this uh, work that my colleague, uh, Dr. Ravi, presented at ASH was uh, taking our uh, experience from both clinical trials and clinical practice of patients who receive quadruple therapy up front and then later experience disease progression. The good news is we, uh, we, uh, we collected 41 patients out of over 200 who received quadruple therapy. So the good news is most people do very well and they haven't had progression. But for those 40 uh, patients, the the findings are very concerning. Uh, if you look at patients who have an early progression, patients who are progressing on quadruple therapy or shortly after transition to a maintenance phase, the outcomes are very poor. The chance of response to the next line of therapy are 20 to 30 percent, and the overall survival is only seven months. Even though those patients uh, often were enrolled in trials with novel therapies, including bispecifics, uh, T-cell engagements, and CAR T-cell therapy. For the patients who have a later progression, so more than a year and a half from the initial diagnosis, so those patients for the most part are not on a, on a, on a, a monoclonal antibody by the time of progression. Some of those are just being observed of any therapy. You would think those patients would do much better. And the fact is they do better. The uh, overall response rate is a bit over 50% but the progression for survival is still about eight, nine months. So it doesn't even compare with what we see, for example, with DARA-KD or DARA-PD uh, or ESA-KD or ESA-PD on patients who are, uh, have not previously been exposed to a monoclonal antibody. So I think the message is, do we need to look at that population separately? I mean, and the, the, the lines of therapy does not really matter a whole lot when you take in consideration prior exposure and prior refractoriness. Those patients progressing, particularly those progressing early after quadruple therapy, are really an, an, an unmet medical need. And we need to create approaches that allows early access to novel therapies that are currently only available on third, fourth, or later lines of therapy.